England's cricketers are facing the prospect of having to follow on against the West Indies in the second Cornhill Test at Lords. Having dismissed the tourists for 419, they made a disastrous start in reply and were 110 for five at the close. It had all started so well for England. Viv Richards, resuming on 60, had seemed preordained to mark his farewell test at Lords with a century, until the combination of De Freitas and the new ball deprived him of such a deserved reward. Instead, it was Hooper who claimed the honour of 100 at HQ, while wickets continued to fall. Most of them went to the persevering Pringle, whose haul of five included Hooper for 111. The rest came relatively quietly. Unfortunately, England's top order then proceeded to surrender without any kind of fight. Atherton out for five, opting for an apology for a stroke. One run later, Hick on naught got a ball from Ambrose, which gave him no option. So far, instead of the expected high scores, Hick's long-anticipated arrival has brought only high-fives celebrations for the opposition. Worse followed as Lamb was again found guilty of reckless driving. 16 for 3, and Gooch once more left to shoulder enormous responsibility. A recovery of sorts was underway until, on 24, Ram Prakash gave Allen his first test wicket. Then calamity as the captain misread Walsh's line. West Indian joy left no doubt they felt that moment opened the door to squaring the series. The top women's seed for Wimbledon has withdrawn just three days before the start of the tournament. Yugoslavia's Monica Selesh has an injury caused by a minor accident, according to her agent. The number one seed is now Steffi Graf, the champion in 1988 and 1989. And the main news again. President Gorbachev has defeated an attempt by hardliners to give some of his powers to the Soviet Prime Minister, Valentin Pavlov. Mr Gorbachev called for swift economic reforms, saying his country had reached the stage where delay is equal to death. Newsnight is on BBC Two at half past ten. But from the nine o'clock news, good night. Have a good weekend. <laughs> With a general election approaching, Jonathan Dimbleby asked the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Norman Lamont, whether the Conservatives can settle their row on Europe and pull Britain out of the recession. On the record, Sunday at one o'clock on BBC One. Good evening, the news in the southeast. Scotland Yard says it's concerned about the growing influence of Chinese gangs known as triads. Senior detectives were initially sceptical, but now say they believe the gangs have up to a thousand members and are responsible for prostitution, money laundering and credit card fraud. We need Chinese victims to come forward and talk to us. We're having that happen. We're having uh, people give evidence against triad leaders. It's beginning to work. The Chinese realise they must deal with the problem now. Politicians in Sussex and France are fighting to save the New Haven to Dieppe ferry service from closure following a series of industrial disputes. The service was suspended by Sealink a week ago because of a strike by French seamen over new working conditions. It's feared the closure could have serious repercussions. There are a lot of people worried about the cessation of the present ferry service. Uh, that would be inevitably leading to a cutback in jobs in the port of New Haven. A London solicitor who defrauded building societies out of more than three and a half million pounds has been jailed for six years. Michael Learmonth from Hampstead admitted dishonestly obtaining 41 mortgages on 19 properties when he appeared before Southwark Crown Court. A primary school in West London has become the first in Britain to be refused permission to opt out of local authority control. Parents of pupils at Harwood School in Fulham had voted for an opting out in an effort to secure its future. Education Secretary Kenneth Clark turned down the request and gave the go-ahead for the school's site to be closed under merger proposals from Hammersmith Council. Part of the Northern Line on the London Underground was closed for several hours today following a series of small trackside fires at Highgate. Passengers were led from trains as smoke filled the tunnels. London Underground says it's thought the fires were sparked by hot grease dripping from a train. There's more news on BBC Local Radio. That's it from us. Here's the weather with Suzanne Charlton. Good evening. We had some rather high pollen counts earlier today down in parts of the southwest, 
in Edinburgh as well. But I think those counts should start to fall. We've certainly got enough unsettled weather around close to this low pressure area to dampen the pollen down. In fact, wrapped around that low, there's quite a lot of cloud, and that's extending especially over parts of Scotland, though it's not moved quite as far north as Shetland at the moment. Now, of course, hardly any darkness up there tonight of all nights, so some bright weather to begin with, but we will see cloud coming in and indeed some rain pushing in towards Orkney by the end of the night. Indeed, most of northern Scotland will be quite cloudy with some rain. We'll see further showers continuing to push into these other western areas from across the sea during tonight. But clear skies, many central and eastern areas. And these are the regions where we'll see the fewest showers tomorrow, though we can still expect a shower almost anywhere, and they could turn out to be heavy. Most of the heavy showers, though, and the most frequent of them, likely in the southwest, Wales, Northern Ireland, Northern England, parts of Scotland as well. There could be hail and thunder mixed in with them, and indeed they'll be quite squally at times probably, brought in on a really brisk wind. The southwesterly is picking up to near gale force at times down in parts of the far southwest. It will certainly take the edge off the temperatures, particularly down the western coastlines and to some extent along the south coast as well. Fairly cool there, fairly cool over northern Scotland too. Some of the highest temperatures in central and eastern parts of England once again, probably seeing temperatures just about up to 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So low pressure being unsettled weather for Saturday and another one rushing rapidly in to bring more wet weather during Sunday. Indeed, fair amount of rain pushing across much of the country during Sunday, showery weather to the north and yet more showers pushing into the southwest too. Indeed, much of northwest Europe will be quite unsettled. Sunshine to the south, the intervening line, well, that's those thunderstorms with the hot weather to the south and the east. Have a good weekend. BBC Two will be examining the second Russian revolution in five minutes, recalling the events in 1989 that inadvertently unleashed a new rebelliousness from the Soviet people. <laughs> Saturday evening on BBC One, 6.35 and do-it-yourself, the art of puppetry and more in the Les Dennis Laughter Show. Then at 5 past 7. My name's Lieutenant Colombo, I'm from the LAPD. One foot in the Mediterranean at 8.20. <laughs> well, at least it's hot and a long way from London. Yes, there's a planet Mercury. <laughs> at 10 past 9, hospital drama in Casualty. Do you know what's happening out there? Do you think she's just gently swanning off the planet with a choir of angels? At 10 o'clock, Paramount City with Curtis and Ishmael. And at 10.40, Tom Cruise in some late-night risky business. What if I said I'd be a girlfriend next couple of days? Saturday evening on BBC One. Now on BBC One, in our wartime drama series, the frustration and tension in the POW camp increases to a dangerous level. Cowra Breakout. <laughs> 